Hallelujah. 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 So today, I'm here to talk to you about God. The God who opens and no man can shut. The God who shuts and no one can open. The one who says, ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. The God who says that as long as you have faith as small as that of a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, be you moved and the mountain will be moved. But what if God decides not to move that mountain? What if you knock and God decides not to open that door? What if you've been praying and praying and praying and you have faith as huge as that of a sequoia tree, but nothing happens? What if? And that is where we as Christians struggle the most, the what if moment. Because it is impossible for us to fathom that we worship a God who would not come through for us. We come to church, especially as Celestians will feel that as long as we've got the seven members praying, there is no way our prayers will not be answered. And the moment that prayer is not answered, we begin to feel perhaps there is no power in that church. The what if moments. And my question is because I know as a believer, as a Christian, every one of us go through our what if moments. That desert experience, what do you do when you're in your desert? Where's <laughs> People go through so much. I see so much pain around and I question, but God, why are you letting this person go through this? Why are you not listening to the voice of your people? It is your word that said that where two or more are gathered in my name, you will be there. When they are agreed upon an issue that you will do unto them. So God, why are you silent? But yet, that voice of silence continues to ring even louder. And what do you do? And I think a lot of times we get to a point where we begin to question God. At times even in our hearts we begin to feel that maybe God is not real. Maybe God truly does not exist. But have you taken a step back to actually try to figure out, God, what are you trying to say to me in my desert? What is it that you're trying to reveal to me? What is it that you're trying to show to me? Because I tell you, as long as God is God, God's only blessing you, you really don't know of God. You don't know about God. Because it continues to bless you, you just know as that person that I go to and he answers my prayers. But the moment you now are in your desert is what really shows what your true relationship is with God. When you're in your desert, when you're having that experience, is what reveals how connected you are to that God. You see, it is easy for us to have faith when mountains are being moved. But it is <laughs> but when that mountain is not going anywhere, we begin to falter. And we begin to question. And we begin to question. And I'm just going to take us to the book of Psalm 77. It says, and this is what happens when a problem arises. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. And so we think, okay, yes, he's doing it. And so our faith is still kind of solid. But then he goes, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. And I know that if not everyone, at least most of us, have been through moments like this. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. So for, for a split second, remember, you know, the things that God had done for us in the past. And we, it, it makes us feel that, well, he's, he's still able to do those things. But then, when those prayers are still not being answered, he now says, will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? God, I have been prayed unto you. I have torn my garment before you. I have sat down in ashes. 
and yet God you're not hearkening to my voice I have cried and I have cried and I have cried and I have cried but yet nothing is happening God where is your face I'm going to take us to the story of Moses who was raised as a prince in Egypt he died with the best of them he was, he was trained by the best of them and then of course there came a point where God had to take him from grace to grass and because he had killed an Egyptian for a Hebrew he had to run away into Midian a desert land now this is a prince who was now forced to live in a desert became a shepherd he lived there for 40 years before God now blessed him and enthroned him and gave him the power to now go lead his people well the question is what happened in those 40 years the Lord taught Moses three things in those 40 years humility servanthood obedience if the Lord had not put him through that there is no way Moses could have led the people of God we we'll look at people in the Bible, we we'll look at Joseph, and we all want the testimony of Joseph. But look at the journey from where Joseph had the dream to where the dream was fulfilled. Joseph had to go through imprisonment, had to go through injustice, had to suffer the slings and hours of outrageous fortunes before he now met with the glory of God. We look at Ruth and Naomi. Yes, we want, we pray to God that like God, as you join Ruth to her boss, Father God, come and do that for me. But look at the, tra the travails and the troubles that Ruth had to go through. But her trials showed that she was steadfast, showed that she was humbled, showed that she was there to, that no matter what may come, Father Lord, I am here, waiting on you, believing in you, trusting in you. It was because of our folks, but she should have said to Naomi, you know what, what, what joined us together was your son, he's gone, I don't have to be with you anymore. But she stayed with Naomi, even in the face of adversity, and because of that, God blessed her. So when we go through our dead experiences, it is for a reason, and it is for a purpose. Don't take it as God being silent. God's silence means He does not love you anymore. He doesn't care about you. When you go through your desert, is when God is actually shown His absolute love for you, whether you believe it or not. Because it is in that desert experience that you now begin to realize what God's purpose is for your life. You may not believe it. Because it is in that desert experience that He equips you to now begin to fulfill whatever purpose He has called you to serve. You know, and at times, we may pray and pray and pray for him, <coughs> and it doesn't happen. But it is because there is a greater glory, and there is a greater joy that lies in heaven that this earth cannot give. And at times, we seek for this job, and we don't get it. But you realize that even through the time where you don't have a job, God continues to provide for your needs? Even when you feel that God is not making a way, He continues to strengthen you. Even before Jesus was crucified, He knelt before God and said, God, if you will, say, you know, take this cup away from me. But He said, your will, but not my will be done. And you know what God did? God did not come and say, I'm going to take that cup away from you. He sent an angel to do what? To strengthen Him. So when you're going through your trials and your tribulations and it seems like your prayers are not being answered, you know what? There's a song I was listening to that said, if God did not move the mountain, then God strengthen me that I can climb that mountain. Wow. That should be your prayer. Because, I, listen, as I stand before you and I'm saying this, I stand at the very antithesis of what I am saying to you. Because I know that in the last few months, I, I, I have been through my health. And I have found days when for nights on end I have cried and cried and cried and said, God, why me? And it is the fear just continues to just say, God, lay you hostage and continues to imprison you. But I know that I know I serve a God who makes a way where there is no way. I know I serve a God whose words are yes and amen. And even as Shech and Bech and Abednego said that even if our God will not save us, we will not bow down to your God. They got thrown into the fire, but the fire did not burn them. It says, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
you will walk through fire. The fire will, will not burn Amen. you. Amen. Because the Lord will continue to strengthen you. So as you go through your trials, listen to the voice of God. Amen. Because God is speaking loudest when you're going through your pain. Amen. God, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to reveal to me? And you know what else the trials do? They break you completely. Yes. God comes in your brokenness. He, he breaks you into pieces. And then he begins to remove those things that do not bring glory into his life. He begins to remove them. And then he molds you and puts you back to that image of his perfection. And says that, yes, you are ready to serve my purpose. Because whatever you are going through will be something that many others will see and be drawn to Christ. That God, you that you did it for this person and he's still serving you. I want to come and know the God they are serving. You that you brought this person out of the, 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 that of the dungeons of death. I want to come and know your God. Just stand firm. I know that even in your desert, the Lord is ever present. Amen. All the people you're reading about in the Bible today, you're reading about them because they went through the trials and tribulations. Abraham had to wait before he got the fulfillment of God's promise in his life. Joseph had to wait. Moses, before being a prince, now became a, even a slave himself. He had to wait. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, came down in the form of flesh, suffered, was crucified for the people who we get to die for before he was then glorified. There is no triumph. There is no greater testimony where there is no trial, where there is no tribulation. The question is, what do you do when you're going through your trials? It is okay to be afraid, but do not let your fear take over your life. Face your fear and say that I know the God that I serve. I know the God that I serve. And just stand firm. And just stand firm. And as God will always remain God, as God will continue to remain the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I am telling you that the glory will be His and His only. And whatever you're going through, <laughs> the Lord will see you through it. Just stand firm and continue to hope in God and continue to trust in God and know that whatever you're going through is not the end. It is for a greater testimony. Jesus.